Good morning and thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of TVC Breakfast. I'm Veronica Dani Boya and I'm not doing this alone. I have Super Sam Masha here with me in the studio as well as Mike Okwache. I'll leave the rest here now. Good morning. <laughs> good, morning. Good, morning. good morning. It's good to have you here. Yeah, it's good, good to morning. have you back on set. Good to see you, Sam. Yeah. Welcome yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's yeah. just uh, delve into some matters uh, that uh, we see making the rounds. Uh, yesterday, we had the, the remaining 23 kidnapped victims released. Uh, and then we also had uh, some news making the rounds uh, on Twitter, where someone tweeted about um, the fact that uh, she moved out of the country. And uh, she found out that those who were in her class, who were her classmates, rather, because uh, she went to study a majority of them are Nigerians, and uh, about 43% uh, of those people are Yorubas. And you saw a lot of reaction to, you know, these tweets, because a lot of Nigerians we see these days are moving out of the country, as it is being said, in Jackpine. And, uh, the, you know, there was another person that came out to say it became like a unilag. Again, because <laughs> there were about 200 of them in a particular class, and the majority of them where Nigerians, it was more like a reunion, again, for, for some persons. And uh, that also, there are different sides to this matter of uh, Jack Pine. There are those, there's the aspect of brain drain. There's the aspect of family ties being broken. There's the aspect of those who are not counting the cost before they move. There are so many aspects to all of this, Sam. Yes. Uh, I remember when we started experiencing this thing, uh, many years ago in, in droves. Although the, the, what we have today is, um, is so big that uh, what was happening then is, is nothing compared to what it is now. I wrote an article in which I, I titled, uh, that I titled uh, Voluntary Slavery, um, in which I said that uh, there's uh, an irony or paradox happening in history that uh, during the transatlantic slave trade, they came here they cutted us, they put us in chains and all of that, and then we went abroad. And they we worked in their farms, we did all the things to make them wealthy, and so on and so forth. Now, we voluntarily took the chains on ourselves, <laughs> and then we decided to even pay. <laughs> to go there and make for the transport. <laughs> and the transportation. And go there and still do the silly little jobs for them to get wealthy. It is, it, is, it, is, it is a situation in which the slavery actually started by our own bad governance. We started enslaving ourselves by bad governance, by creating a society that has not delivered to the citizen. And when that, that happens, you see desperation. You feel a sense of disenfranchisement. The, the individual believes, this is not my country, although this is where I was born. Because the country has not given me joy, has not given me peace, has not given me uh, hope, has not given me a future. So um, let me go somewhere else. So in a sense, I'm a citizen of the world. But it's in an actual sense, you have actually decided to wed yourself to another form of servitude. Mm. That is what is happening. And many people are doing it now. They go there. If you, it's quite, quite, if you, if you succeed, they do well. But um, they're like V.S. Paul, who wrote uh, the uh, number of novel Mimic Men, uh, the song, song A House for Beasts and all that. When he was asked, because he was living a peripatetic life, moving from one place to the other in the West, he came from the Caribbean, but it was, he spent most of his life in Europe, especially in Britain. Is that if I look, when I look at the British sun, I look at it every morning, I discover that this is not my son. I don't right. belong here. Right, right. But yeah, I spent all my life all here. Life. I've won the Nobel Prize working <laughs> here. But where is my soul? Yeah. That, that, that's it. So just feel not part well, of the system. Well, when you share such stories with uh, a majority of these young persons like we're seeing on the screen, because a majority of them, it must be said, are young persons who we often have said are the leaders of tomorrow, but these leaders are moving out yeah. in droves. They tell you that, uh, let them go and have a taste of what you're saying. Yeah. Let them go where they feel mm -hmm. they have a sense mm -hmm. of that future mm -hmm. that they, they want to build for themselves. Mm -hmm. And their generation 
because mm -hmm. the, the uncertainties they see in the country is what they tell you is pushing them out of the yeah. country. It, it's a trend, and we have seen those kind of trends at different eras of our lives. Like Sam was talking about the slave trade. That one wasn't our making. Mm. But the point there is that in human development, as you grow from era to era, from epoch to epoch, you find trends of all kinds from different places and different. That's the trend right now. And unfortunately, this is totally, one, almost 100% a makeup of leadership. Yes. Issues of leadership. We, we was in this country, even if we were not born. Okay, I think we were, a lot of us were, we were born, born at that time. Mm. When uh, UCH Ibado, yeah. well, people come from all over the world. We had so, exchange programs. Exchange programs. Were coming we have had that. Well, some of us were born that time. Mm. Others were not born. Some heard the story very vividly mm. and all of that. So what happened? Mm. So the point there is that if leadership arranges everything, the citizens would take care of the remaining. For instance, just by, by the side, the Ikui uh, Lekki Link Bridge yes. was made. When it was constructed, government just did their own. Now, every movie, you find it every music video, <laughs> the promotion of that bridge all over the world, the, the issue there is the moment you take care of that you know, primary thing, the people will take care of the remaining thing. Really? The promotion, the, what, the beautification and all of that. It's For instance, hard. an average Rwandan yeah. is telling you about his or her country. They make you feel that that is the heaven and that is the earth. So when we are trying to, no, it's not as bad. Don't even say it. The moment you take care of certain things, the people themselves will handle the rest. And that, that's why it has been said that what Nigerians are really asking for. It's, it's not, not much. much. It's not much it's not at much. all. It's Just not much. give them stable light. Yeah. Water. Security. Security. Leave the rest to them. They will, they, handle, they it. will handle it. We are all, like somebody said, we are all government in our own selves where Absolutely. an average person grows up, Absolutely. you provide everything for yourself. Yes. Nobody Absolutely. relies on government for anything. That's it. Yeah, yeah, so, it's interesting though is that, um, is that we, we find that Nigerians will, will start creating communities abroad. Mm. Because the, yeah. the bigger the Nigerian community abroad, the, 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 the more autonomous the Nigerian community will be abroad. And the more autonomous it becomes, mm. the more attractive it is for others to come and join them. Yeah. Yes. And so on abroad, yes. you have Nigerian communities in uh, when I was in Colorado, uh, before I left, the Nigerian community was small, but now it's, it's so big. It's huge. <laughs> Those days yeah. used yeah. to go to um, uh, another man to, to a shop to buy Gary and all of that, but Nigerians sell now. They have their own <laughs> shop. And so then there's a quick point is that Big this thing, thing yeah. is happening in a time of fierce nationalism where everybody is saying, in Europe and in America, my country is for my yeah, people yeah. first and not for others. Mm -hmm. So in this, in this instance to... of paranoia and xenophobia, this is the time that we are going abroad yeah. to go and meet them. So it creates greater attention. Yes, yeah. the, the 23 remaining captives of the Abuja Kaduna bound train attacked by terrorists are now breathing the air of freedom. The latest on that incident that happened on March the 28th of this year is that all captives have now regained freedom after spending over six months in captivity. The news of their release was from the Secretary of the Chief of Defense Staff Action Committee, Usman Yusuf, who disclosed that the hostages were released by their captors at about 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Mr. Yusuf said that the committee took custody of the victims shortly after their release. Now, let's briefly run you through some of the occurrences that shaped that fateful day, the 28th of March, 2022, which will remain fresh in the minds of Nigerians for a long time. At around 7.45 p.m. on that fateful day, hundreds of passengers traveling to Kaduna were kidnapped, others killed, and some injured by bandits who bombed the Abuja Kaduna bound train. Approximately 970 passengers were on board, with several of them abducted and taken into the bush by the marauding bandits who arrived on motorbikes holding firearms and other deadly weapons. The train left Abuja's Idu station at about 6 p.m. and was scheduled to arrive in Kaduna's Regasa train station by 8 p.m. According to eyewitness accounts, the train was bombed twice before the armed bandits opened fire on the travelers. Although 26 passengers were officially declared missing, 
as of April the 4th, and 150 passengers were still un unaccounted for, for at that time. Now, at least eight people were killed, including Amin Mahmoud, a youth leader of the ruling of Progressives Congress, Chinelo Megafu Chinelo, a medical doctor, Tibile Mosugu, a lawyer, barrister, Musa Lawal Uzigi, Secretary General, Trade Union Congress, with more than 65 others kidnapped. The following week, the hostage takers released a businessman and 11 more captives were released in June. In a statement released on the 28th of March this year, the Nigerian Medical Association confirmed that Ms. Chinelu tweeted shortly after the train from Abuja to Kaduna was attacked by terrorists saying, quote, I am in the train. I have been shot. Please pray for me, end quote. In the aftermath of the attack, the Nigerian Air Force conducted raids in the forest on the boundary of Niger and Kaduna State, killing no fewer than 34 terrorists. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari says he is delighted over the safe release of the remaining 23 kidnapped train passengers held hostage by Boko Haram terrorists. The president said the nation owed the military and all other security and intelligence agencies a debt of gratitude for the successful conduct of the operation leading to the release of the hostages. He said the relief that has come to the nation from the closure of this unfortunate saga must be sustained across the country at all times. President Buhari maintained that his government will take credit for resolving the issue and the de-escalation of terrorism, banditry and kidnapping that ravaged some parts of the country recently. To politics now, where the All Progressives Congress National Working Committee met earlier on Wednesday with the Progressives Governors Forum to finalize plans on kicking off its campaigns. The governors say they are proud of the national convention that produced the party's presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu. They maintained that the party is working towards harmonizing the campaign list before the final composition is released. Habida Lawal has details. There have been speculations of a disagreement between the campaign council and the party. These issues of contentions are around the constitution of the campaign team. We're very happy. Also the director very, general of the campaign, happy. Simon Lalong, had announced a shift in the start off of the campaign, but this meeting has laid to rest the speculations of a rift, as any issues that arose from the constitution of the campaign list is being resolved. We are happy that we are discussing, even though there were leaks that were unfortunate, which the campaign council and the party have announced a, a mistake and they are not authorized. But I'm, I'm confident, I'm happy to say that the party are solidly behind our candidates and our party. And whatever leaks that have come out erroneously, we believe will soon be sorted out. We are very, very comfortable. We have established machinery for resolving any, any conflict you know, that may hang. We, we're very sure that we are together on this, on the same page with the Governor's Forum, same page with the Campaign Office now and the National Working Committee. I believe this meeting that we've had is more than useful for all of us. Uh, for us, nothing short of victory is good enough for us. And uh, the spirit of today's meeting underlines that fact. The meeting, which lasted for four hours, had in attendance the governors of Plateau, Niger, Undo, Zamfara Kanu, Nasara Kebi, Jigawa and the Deputy Governor of Bernou State. This meeting is aimed at addressing issues surrounding the start-up of the presidential campaign of the All Progressives Congress. Habib Alawal, TVC News, Abuja. It was a carnival-like atmosphere in Oweri when women of the All Progressives Congress in the Southeast region converged to rally support for its presidential candidate, Ashiwaju Ahmed Tinubu, the state governor, who was the told the women that the party is committed to ensuring its presidential candidate wins the 2023 presidential election. TVC's Prince Oba has details. These women from the five states in the southeast geopolitical zone are here in Owere to show their solidarity with Ashwaju Bola Tinubu and his running mate Kasim Shetima. 
the governor of Imo State, Hope Uzodimma, welcome the women to the government house. He says this kind of support from the women is indicative of the goodwill the APC and the Shua Jubala Tinubu enjoy in the southeast. Uzodimma declared that the southeast region is a stronghold of the APC and he believes the party will emerge victorious in next year's presidential election. I'm very really happy for our presidential candidate, the Jagaban of our time. And we are all committed to APC. And we are all working for APC. And we believe that what is happening in Lagos should happen in Nigeria. We believe that those who initiated what is happening in Lagos should also initiate what will happen in Nigeria. Those who have been tested are supposed to be trusted. We've tested them, we should trust them. The wife of Imo State Governor Choma Uzodemma, who is a frontline women mobilizer, believes that Ashwaju Bolatinubu is a formidable candidate who will give the women their pride of place in government. The way forward is to go with Bola Ahmed Sinibu, the Jagaban of Bogu Kingdom, and they are so ah! It is on record that the ruling all progressive Congress in the Nigeria of today has given women a lot of opportunities in politics and corporate governance more than any other. And on that day, from beginning to the end, we are going to vote for APC candidates. Our presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinebu, he has done well in Lagos State and is going to do better for Nigeria. This political rally is to mobilize and ensure that the APC secures majority votes at the polls and also show solidarity with APC presidential candidates as the party prepares to officially commence its campaigns across the country. Prince Oba, TVC News, Were. With us, it's time now to take a look at stories, making headlines on Nigerian newspapers. And I begin with the Punch newspaper. INEC governorship list litigation kicks 14 APC PDP uh, Labour Party candidates out. Uh, parties face court cases in Eboyin, Akwaibom, Enugu, six others. Commission OK Sonwolu, Abiodu, Makinde, 834 others. you find all of the details on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And to the front page of the Nation newspaper now, APC National Working Committee governors, uh, Presidential Campaign Council members unite for Tinubu, flag bearer uh, returns today, Southeast APC women hold rally in Oweri. you find the details on the front page of uh, the Nation newspaper. To the front page of the Blueprints now, Adamu on Tinubu's list, why APC can't commence campaign without governors says they are key to party's victory. Release campaign list will be sorted out by Gudu. ACF police warn politicians against uh, rigging uh, thuggery. You'll find the details on the front page of the Blueprint newspaper. To the Daily Times now, reach out of court settlement. Appeal court advises federal government ASU a shift hearing till today. Reach out of court settlement. Appeal Court advises federal government and ASU a shift hearing till later today. Mike. All right, I have first news here on this side, and it says, free at last, military rescues remaining 23 kidnapped Kaduna train passengers. Buhari commends military for achieving defeat. That's what uh, the first news has here. From there, let's go to this Nigeria. Uh, this Nigeria says, free at last. Six months after Abuja Kaduna train attack, military secure release of remaining 23 hostages. Okay, that is what uh, this Nigeria has. From there, let's go to leadership newspaper. Kaduna train attack. After six months in captivity, remaining 23 victims regain freedom. And the federal government says it was a, a covert operation. No ransom was paid. Uh, PMB, that's the President Muhammad Buhari, hails military. Uh, we're yet to see our loved ones. Families are saying this. Uh, Abuja Kaduna train service to resume soon. NRC, 
is saying this. That's, that's a leadership newspaper. From there, let's go to Daily Trust. Daily Trust says, 23, how 23 remaining abducted Kaduna train passengers were released. And uh, families excited how negotiators sealed a deal. Uh, NRC to unveil a plan on train service resumption. All that on the front page of the Daily Trust. And uh, the last one with me here is Nigeria News Direct. And it says 19.76 trillion Naira budget presentation. Presidency battles padding by MDAs. Okay. Presidency battles padding by MDAs. Announces a 720 billion Naira borrowing plan. And uh, reps commence process of scrapping MDAs. Okay. This is part of the discussion so far. This is what I have on the side. Very all right, all right. Let's quickly look at uh, the release of uh, the 23 uh, Kaduna uh, train uh, kidnap vict victims. So we recall that this happened sometime in March, about six months ago, and uh, a number of them were kidnapped, out of which about eight of them were said to have uh, died in the process, one of which was uh, Chinelu, who was said to be a medical uh, personnel. And then there was also the aspect with regards to this uh, matter where we had uh, the person of Tukumamu, who was the initial negotiator, uh, you know, between the federal government and the uh, terrorists that kidnapped these persons. But in the process, he decided to pull out of the negotiation because he said that his life was being threatened and so many issues because we had him here on set. And afterwards, uh, he was arrested by the DSS and is said to still be in the custody of uh, DSS. But thus far, the remaining persons are now being released and uh, the families are excited, Nigerians are excited. This operation happened uh, based on a seven-man presidential committee assembled by the chief of defense staff, Lucky Rabot, as I said, they carried out this operation. A laudable one, we must say. Um, one of the uh, points that came up to me immediately I heard the news was the story that Tuko uh, Mamu was uh, pushing around about uh, a young lady that was supposed to have been um, married off. Uh, in the, in, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the, what do I call it, on the, on the verge of a coerced matrimony mm -hmm. with the commander. You know, so what to know what the girl will say now for herself? What happened? What's the story? How much of this was true and how much of it was not? Because it was said that uh, maybe it was part of Tuko Mamo's um, um, strategy, you know, to escalate the whole idea of um, forcing government to pay for their release. The other issue is we don't know how much did the, did the government pay to get these people out. Did they not government pay? Government said they did not pay. They, well, no, well no they, have, they have never mm. said that they have paid. They have <laughs> never, never, nobody no, has government ever has said, never paid ransom. Why, 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 why you? The government doesn't pay ransom. They have never said that they <laughs> But, you know, as they say, as Shakespeare wrote, say, all is well that, that ends, ends well. well. That so from rather than the people and the family pouring costs on, uh, on the government, they won't say as... Uh, you know, the lamentation of David, when he said, you man taste of your boy, there shall be no dew, no, no, neither there shall, there shall be rain upon you or, the, or, or upon your fields of offerings. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the shadow of the mighty have been violently cast away. And now they will turn that over and uh -huh. say, okay, let there be rain and let there be dew. Let there be rain upon you and, you, and your shield shall not be cast away. You know, the, so things have now turned the other way for... For, for the, the government. government, but the, this is also uh, a reflection that the government is taking security a little more seriously now. And uh, this is one of the narratives that the government itself, in its incapacity to tell its own story, has not been able to, to, to show that even in the media, even, even editors and so on are unwilling to tell the story of the stamp down in violence across the country, whether it's in the Northeast or around the country, there is a certain timidity of intellectual expression to say, okay, let us face the fact. Things are not as bad as they used to be. Whether tomorrow it will change, we don't know. But in the past month or so, especially since the time of the um, Kujie prison, there has been an attack on the, on the National Guard. There has been um, some kind of um, wake-up. It was a wake-up, some kind of 
a born again spirit in terms of violence uh, 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 attitude, uh, attitude towards violence by this uh, government. Well, mm. some persons will say that perhaps we shouldn't have waited till the point of seeing such attacks happen before we begin to have this born again uh, at, at, attitude towards addressing matters of uh, security. Yeah, we should have waited. Lives have been lost. Yes. Things, things have happened. Uh, people have gone away and so on. Uh, Toro said, you can't kill time without injuring eternity. You have already killed time. You have injured eternity. Mm -hmm. But we still have time on our hands. As, right. uh, as, uh, <laughs> as uh, Don Williams says, you have time on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, so the point is, the point is, all is well that ends, that ends well. well. Yeah. Yes, Indeed. you know, Indeed. Jesus Indeed. Christ was uh, was uh, slain, but then we have redemption. No. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I like that point. The, yeah. the issue that is sometimes security, where they say, ah, this place is peaceful. What makes the place peaceful sometimes can be overrated. Mm. Sometimes it's not because there is uh, some conscious efforts to ensure some things don't happen. Maybe it's just because uh, nothing really just didn't happen, so it looked peaceful. Mm -hmm. But by the time some conscious efforts, the kinetic energy comes in where there is a forceful uh, uh, activity that leads to something, then every other person wakes up. That is, that is what is happening. In Nigeria, like in 1960 and in the 70s and all of that, it wasn't because they couldn't have, there wasn't because the military or the police or the DSS were exceptional. It was just because Nigerians were just, everybody was just coming, looking in a certain direction and all of that. But when that road wasn't going forth, you saw that people started looking for alternatives and they started fending for themselves. And those who wanted to go uh, through all the alternative means that are not lawful, and then he, he jacked up the, pit, the, the spit of violence and things like that. Mm -hmm. And that put pressure on the security agencies to ensure that uh, normalcy returns. Mm -hmm. Now, the DSS and the military, we have often said, if those guys, in fact, Nigerian DSS, Nigerian military, Nigerian security agencies remain some of the most professional across the world. Absolutely. Now, whatever makes the, the feeling of the fact that sometimes we are not seeing that thing, sometimes it's just leadership or politics because... You remember the, the security apparatus of all security agencies, all is like a pyramid where at the top is the commander in chief. The wait for that command, and at the point of that command is politics. So, so, so sometimes that's what holds us back. Now you are seeing oh, it is still the military that we've had that time that we still have right now. Mm. It is still the, the DSS that we had that time that we still have right now. So, what changed? It is still the same. So, when you see the, 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 the will, you always find the way. But Nigerians had always said, government, do anything you can do. Whether you will pay ransom, whether you will, you know, forcefully go into the place or gas the people to sleep and collect our people back. We, all we want is do our something. family members mm. back. Mm. Now the family members are back. Of course, as we get along, stories will come very soon. How... What, 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 transpired. what transpired between behind the scenes? Whether money was paid, we don't know. Whether it was uh, a, 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 collab so a negotiation Station. between some foreign, you know, whatever, we don't. But all of those will be made clear mm. in the days to come. Absolutely. But uh, we must commend uh, Sister Security Agency's collaboration to uh, achieving all of this because uh, the Chief of uh, Defense Staff mentioned that it was not just them. There were also Sister Security Agencies uh, that, you know, came up to achieving this feat. And that is one of the things we've been talking about, collaboration, mm -hmm. to addressing any issue, whether security, economy, whatever it is in the country. We have to really get down to the point. These people who did it, who were they? Let us get to the bottom. Because when we're talking about a tamp down in violence and banditry, there's also a need for reckoning. Who were those behind it? What, those who have been arrested, what kind of justice are we going to get to them? We don't, we don't, we don't want to go to a society where we have the justice of the murderer, the justice of the rapist, the justice of the thief. We want the justice of the innocent. Mm. So, so in order to achieve that, we have to bring all those who have been arrested and bring them for public trial. So there is some kind of 
not only spiritual, but also moral catharsis, where everybody will say, yes, there is an end to this story. When you, you, you release somebody from captivity and the captor is still there, mm. eh? then there is still a sense that justice is only half achieved. Mm. So we need a, a closure, a full story about this. You know, so that we don't get a sense that that you know there is a there is still a love for the there's a love for the oppressor there's a love for the tyrant. So we it's not that we love yeah, to, to quote um, uh, Brutus. It's not that we love we love the uh, Nigerian less, but that we love the tyrant more. <laughs> that, that we are releasing, we are releasing him, but we love him, but we still love the tyrant. So we don't want to arrest him. And, so and that, that is so there's, something so that has divided justice. Yes, yes that's yes. one thing that uh, has uh, a lot of Nigerians have often spoken about in terms of justice being done and seen to be mm. done with mm. regards to this matter, holding yes. these persons to account, yes. such that we can get closure and then yes. we can know that yes. We, had, we are doing something with regards to the fight against uh, insecurity and bringing these persons to book. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, the ranks of the Academic Staff Union of Universities appears to have been divided as the federal government recently presented certificates of registration to two breakaway factions of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. The new unions, uh, the National Association of Medical and Dental Academics and the Congress of Nigerian University Academics, which will exist alongside ASU, have resolved to resume work. How does this move threaten the existence of ASU, and what does this mean for Nigeria's education system? Joining us in the studio for this discussion is Inibehe F. Young, lawyer and social development advocate. Good morning. It's good to have you on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right now, on. let's get your impression of this decision by the federal government to register these two uh, new... Uh, Association, so to speak, NAMDA, that is the Nigerian Association of Medical and Dental Academics, as well as KONUA, Congress of uh, Nigerian University Academics. Well, let me start by saying that the ongoing strike that has lasted for the last, uh, getting to seven to eight months, yes. uh, should be perceived as a national embarrassment mm. that you have a country that is so blessed in human and natural resources, bedeviled by such prolonged industrial disputes, industrial conflict in the education sector. And yet, it appears that at this time, there is no clear indication of an immediate resolution. Now, the Academic Staff Union of Universities have made the point and of course, it is true that in 2009, they entered into an agreement with the federal government of Nigeria regarding funding of universities, university autonomy, uh, payment of N academic allowances, general condition of service, uh, matters relating to visitations, uh, you know, and by and several other areas that uh, they had reached agreement on. Of course, that's who has said that the federal government has defaulted yes. regarding implementation. And they threatened to go on strike, and that is where we have been. They eventually embarked on this strike that has not been resolved. Now, is the federal government saying that the solution to the trade disputes in quote, I said in quote, between ASU and the federal government can be resolved by polarizing or organizing ASU. What is the purpose? What is the intention behind the sudden registration of these splinter groups? Mm. I, for example, am particularly interested in knowing who the members of these new unions are. Mm. I, I have monitored conversations on social media since these reports came to light. I haven't seen one lecturer in any tertiary institution, not in Mama Meta, or any university known to me, who has publicly expressed 
to be membership of this new union. So who are the members of this new union? And in any event, does that show good faith? Mm. The federal government has gone to court. The court had made an order. Asu is aggrieved and has gone to the court of appeal. Are you not supposed to take steps to ensure that the real dispute is resolved? First. Before, yes, because what is the intention? Mm. And I personally feel, and this is my opinion, that the Minister of, uh, of Labor, uh, Mr. Gris Nkigi, yeah. doesn't seem to have the temperament to resolve this issue. If you would listen to the conversation, the comments he has made, some, you know, pejorative remarks he has directed at ASU and their members, you know, I think at some point even describing some of them as roadside academics and so on. He has become extremely combative. I, I watched the video where he stormed out of the House of Representatives. Yes. I don't think that is the temperament of somebody who wants to resolve so this, a dispute with intellectuals. I so, do not think... So this is more of a power play. Absolutely. I, I think Gigi is just trying to prove a needless point. Because my position is that, suffice it to say that you have considered that there are aspects of the agreement that has not been made. One would expect that the government would act in a responsible manner and then invite every person, institution, capable of mediating and resolving this issue. The House of Reps had intervened, and we had hoped that this was going to be resolved. Because what the minister has done amounts to an escalation. Mm -hmm. It can only prolong the strike. I don't think registering these bodies is going to significantly have any bearing. Uh, we are waiting to see. see. Okay, they have now announced the registration. Has the strike been called off? Have lecturers resumed work? Who are the members of the union? Who is the president of this union in, in Uniben? Or the chairman in Uniben? In Unilorin? University of Lagos? University of Uyo? Who are the leaders of this new union that they have registered? Asu has a structure that is well grounded in many years of agitation. That is not the structure that you can just throw but, but, under but, the boss. But people have said that uh, this is Asu. Every government of the day, Asu must have a problem with them. Uh, issue, 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 they had the 2009 agreement. And the federal government says that of the seven uh, issues, they have, uh, they have been able to, to, to solve five. They said N academic allowances, they paid them $40 billion in uh, January to February 2021. The EAA and EA, um, that is uh, $22.27 billion was paid for them, to them in uh, 2021 and may streamed into the 2021 budget as promised. 30 billion was paid in June 2021 for revitalization, as in, as uh, as as they said, there is a UTAS and IPS crisis still going on. They said that they, they wanted to see how they could bring them together. Um, they, they 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 are they have they have said that they they have made a lot of payments to them, and that they, what these people are asking for now is that look, we want the backlog of our salaries for strikes that they created on their own. Now, I can see the mischief that is going on with this um, issue of whether they are coming out with uh, Konoa and one of that, and so, and so on and so forth. But the question is, why don't they go back to school when they know that this government is on its last leg? Why can't they, for the interest of the students, say, OK, it looks like we have reached a rut with this government. Let us see what we can do with the next, next government. government. Because what is going on is that eight months have gone. The students, the, the, the lecturers, many of them are not losing anything. Many of them have all kinds of places they are teaching. They are teaching here, they are teaching there, they are making some kind of allowance, and the students are there, lying fallow. Why can't you say for the interest of Nigeria education and for the interest of um, of the students. Let us go back to school and let us wait till the next administration because as we have now, it is a deadlock. It is like what I call a Kafkaian conversation. You know, with Kafka, they, 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 somebody goes to a building, he never really sees anybody there. And that is where he's supposed to get something. Or a, a giant insect. Somebody, I, I have a conversation with a giant insect. 
you know, that kind of thing. That, that there's no conversation going on. Why don't we take the higher path? Go to school, it's just uh, a few months. Get it over with, then start with a new administration because it's deadlock. So who is who is who is who here? Who is the patriot here? Mr. Master, your 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 sentiments are understandable, but the issues that predicated the strike in the first place mm. is not administration specific. It is not tied to the Buhari administration. As a matter of fact, it predates it. And funding of education, revitalizing our comatose educational system, building laboratories in universities, paying academics, intellectuals, what they are supposed to earn, compared to what their contemporaries in even other African countries are earning. And of course, making the academic environment learning and conducive. This is not a matter, with profound respect, that I feel should be reduced to the fact that the government's uh, tenure is just about coming to an end. The government has had seven years. Yeah, the seven years have gone. Yes, I'm so we have, we have, No, you're not going back now. Yes. The point is, what do we do now that the education system is in a rut, the students are not going to school, and you know that you have reached a deadlock with this administration? Why don't you just go to school and bear just a few months and say, okay, let us see what the new administration will bring because you are not going to gain anything by continuing by not by not going to school at this time because you are not going to gain anything from this government. So why don't you say, okay, we are done with this government. Let us go back to school. Let's restrategize for whoever becomes president next time because it's not going to be Buhari again in 2023. Why? Good question. If the Buhari administration has come to a conclusion that it lacks the capacity to resolve this strike. They should say so. Maybe ASO will now consider resuming. Because... But they have shown it, they have, they have shown it already. Well, well the, the, point remains, the point remains that the federal government of Nigeria should not be personalized. It is beyond Muhammad Obari. It's not beyond him. No, I'm it's saying. not beyond him. It's the, it's the president and commander-in-chief. Yes. He takes the decision. He himself in the, in the uh, what do they call it, in the, in the independence broadcast, he himself said that the people should go back to school. In other words, we have done what we can do. He says so. Well, we, have, we have given them what we want to, what we can give them. Yeah. But what the people are saying is, the, the answer is saying is that, is, that, is that they should bring us the money. Give us the money that you are owing us. Give us, we want the, we want the money. And, and then they say, then they say uh, there's so much corruption in government. You people can't tighten, tight, tighten the nooses, and you are saying that uh, uh, you don't have the money. You have the money. They are saying the government is saying, how do we pay you if we pay you this amount that you want for the president or the uh, what do you call it for the professors and so on? You have doctors. You have other people also want money. Mm -hmm. So so what the, what what you want is for the universities to be freed so that they can make their own money and get minimal uh, 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 you know, contribution from uh, elsewhere. But even the universities, they have the, as they said, they have been accused of lack of creativity, lack of imagination to even take the bull by their horn. I, I, I don't think it is that simple. Uh, I personally would not support commercialization of our educational system. It's Why? not commercialization. That's why well, the best well, universities in the world well, don't rely on government. Of, uh, <laughs> don't rely on the best universities. If you can look at the top 10, top 20, top 50 universities, most of them don't rely on government money. They go out there and, and they use the resources, uh, the, the resources that, they, that they can muster to enthrone themselves. I'm not saying that government should not add, but government should, government should give them the money and and I understand too that there, is some, there are some strictures, institutional strictures that that uh, that do not allow them really really uh, go out on their own. I understand that, but those are issues that can be resolved not with this administration. Because this administration, uh, to tell you the truth, is not ready to to um, you know. I don't have the time, given what their time to even do all of that. So why don't you wait till the next administration? And say, when that comes, then let us 
table everything on the table and see whether a fresh start can go on. I don't know how this fresh starts to be because they have had fresh starts from one administration to the other. There must be something wrong about the strategy of ASU. What other there must be something else. Have, that's what I'm what, telling what, what you. What other options? That's what I'm telling you. They have not. They have not. What other option does that have? To they, have? have they been able to really use the muscle of the National Assembly to get certain laws done? Have they been able to use that? They're just beginning to do that. What they are doing with the out of out of rep, we out of rep now has come. I, I don't know the details of what they recommended and so on and so forth. But they need to galvanize the institutions of democracy to force the arm of government to do things that, they, that, that can be done. For me, for me, that will, yes, it is an interesting advocacy which I endorse, but it, by implication, that can also be perceived as a vote of no confidence of the government of Nigeria, because you have people in the National Assembly who were elected to represent Nigeria. Yeah. If these are matters that has to do with legislation, in the House of Reps in the Senate, they have committees on education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what have they done about it? The, they have not. The House of Reps yeah. has tried to mediate on this matter. And I'm making it clear yeah. that even while that discussion is going on, you have the Minister of Labor acting in a manner that is counterproductive, in a manner that is contrary to what the House of Reps is trying to achieve. So for me, I still believe that the blame squarely lies on the foot of the federal government, the executive arm of government. Where is the president? Where is the vice president? Where is the secretary to the government of the federation? Why is Ndiki still part of this negotiation? Because from all indications, he has shown Ndiki clear was removed faith. from the negotiation. At some point. At the point. And I'm then saying. The, and then the minister of education, education was put in. there. I'm and saying. Then, and then the minister of education said, okay, we have given these people some offers. We gave them offer. Uh, they didn't present salary. anything. They, they, they did not come with a counter offer. Am, because I'm, they said I'm that saying. there's no need for counter offer. I'm saying. We had the uh, Nasuma yeah. here saying that, what is that? That, that was not an offer. That was, uh, <laughs> you didn't use one, one expression. It was an offer. It was just uh, uh, a drop of water. In it the was something, there was one expression he used. And uh, almost like a decree. It was decreed to them that this is what you can do. No, but you have to come with counter offer. If they say they're giving you this, yeah, you have to come down from your high horse and say, okay, let us negotiate down to this. But they said they have, have nothing to do. If you read... And they deny yes. that this, there, was, there, was a, there was an offer. No, if, <laughs> you read, if you read the resolutions yes. after the meeting with the House of Reps, yes. it was clearly stated that some form of understanding and agreement had been reached and that it was left for this to be put before the president for ratification, mm. to be ratified. Mm. But while this process was ongoing, mm. somebody went to court Somebody decided to create new unions. Mm. And even the president, who is supposed to resolve this, has even penciled the Minister of Education for National Honor. We are not a serious country. You cannot have our, uni our universities closed for seven months. <laughs> and the Minister of Education is being given a national honor. So that alone is a way of telling us that you must continue with the strike. Is that not the reason? This is, this is also, Mr. Obomasi, this is also about the character of Nigeria as a country, who we want to portray to the world. Yeah. I passed through public institutions all through my life, from primary to secondary to university. So I have interest in public education. When I was in the university, there was a course, a GST that we were taught called Introduction to Computer. And one day I stood up, I told the lecturer, I said, sir, every day we come here, you are teaching us about computer. You have never shown us what a computer looks like. That is the fate. That is the, the, the situation. I agree. public education of I, I, I agree. in this country. I, I agree with so you. So at what point? I haven't, I haven't known that. I haven't known that. I haven't known that this is the way it is. Why don't you just get the children to school? To learn what? Well, but they, they have been learning. Learn they have been learning. There was a curriculum. Well, there's the a curriculum. There's, yes. uh, there are things going yes. on. And yes. even if they solve, if they resolve their, their stuff today, they're not going to get all those things in school between now and uh, at May next year. Are they? No, they're not. So why don't you take them to school, know that this government is, you know, is done for, and then go and then move ahead. Why don't you do that? So, it, it, so it gives a sense yes. that, that what the ASU people are doing is they, they have become more political than actually educational in their own sense of what the crisis is.
that they are more interested in making a political point than an educational point. Right? No, you have made a valid point that even if they resume, uh, things are not going to change overnight. I'm not going to change overnight. But where is the evidence? That the government is even genuinely interested in reviving our education. That's the point. They, if they are not genuinely interested, so we must, then, that, then, then they are on their way out. So why don't you let them go out? <laughs> that is why. <laughs> Mr. Why don't let them go out? Let them wait for them to go out. Go Mr. to Mr. school. <laughs> if you have only chalk, teach you the chalk until you go. And then when the other time comes, then those who don't have computer, I can say, okay, we didn't have computer. We want computer now. Uh, the new government, the new president, this is the situation. We need, we need computer now because... These people who are there, they are not listening to us. We have had a Kafkaesque conversation with them. They are talking, we are not hearing. We are talking, they are not hearing. We are going to a situation, you know, in the Ch 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 novel, when they were eating fufu, eh? everybody was eating, the fufu was a mountainous one. Eh? It was after the fufu had come down. They said, oh, you did there? Okay, then there's a handshake across the fufu. Eh? But this time, the fufu is still big. There's no handshake. Everybody is eating on its own side. Eh? <laughs> what is talking about? Mr. Master, you, you know, I, it, it seems you you don't believe that this government is redeemable regarding this strike. But both sides are not redeemable. That's what he's saying. My, so they are saying that they, they are two wrongs you cannot make a right. My the students, but, but no, they, they, made, there's no. There's as much no, as we are looking at perhaps <laughs> the government not being redeemable with regards to this matter, but offers were made by the government yes. to addressing this. Yes. So we cannot categorically say that the government did not do something to address the it. The offer that we made. With the offers made in good faith, one. With the offers reasonable, two. Three. Who what steps were what taken? Good faith. Yeah. What steps were taken? Because I have I have highlighted the issues, and I also stated that it does appear, it does appear, that the federal government is speaking from both sides of the mouth. So for me, and this is the point, we must take a decision as Nigerians whether to hold the government accountable or not. Because if we continue to allow and say, oh, of course, I, I, I mean, we are, we are, most of us are affected by the strike. If we are not directly affected. We have relations. We have friends who are affected. Absolutely. But we must take a position as a country whether to insist on proper funding of the educational system or not. And let, let me make this clear. This president, part of the reason why he does not understand the need, the imperative, the urgency of resolving this strike is because the students attended Ivy League schools. The students have not, his student, I mean, the students have not passed through our public universities. If Buari's kids, if Buari had a child who is at home today for seven months, and, I believe it would be concerned. I'm giving him concern about. Uh, I but believe you would I be concerned. Go, I want to go to school. Go and do something. They, 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 you have a point. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not uh, distributing all of that. What I'm just saying is that, is that ASU is taking this matter more politically than and educational. educational. That there is no love between them. They say when two elephants fight, eh, the grass, grass suffers. suffers. Even when they make love, the grass also suffers, according to Oliku and you. But this one, they are neither making love not even fighting. Everybody is on their own side. Eh? It's like two dogs. Two dogs that are growling at each other. Oh, oh. But there's no fight going on. Eh? So we really, we really want, if they want to fight, let them fight. But they can't fight. They can't make love. Eh? No, no, none of them has a romantic attitude towards the other. So why, why not just stay your own lane and say my own lane? Go back to school and leave the <laughs> government in its own, uh, in its own right. situation. So at the end of the day, you, the students will at least gain something. That's if you don't have computer, at least you have chalk. If we take... Eh? If, you can't see the, if, you can't uh, see, right. if you can't see the computer, you can draw it on the wall and say, have a vision of it. Or you can, you can take the picture from online and All say, right. this is how computer <laughs> is. Time is not on our side, but if you could quickly wrap up your point in just a few seconds, because we need to go. The concluding point for me yes. is that under Chapter 2 of our Constitution, the government has the responsibility to guarantee qualitative education. All right. And we have a duty to hold the government to, to that account. responsibility. We know what happens behind the scenes here, but uh, that's for us, not for you. But moving forward now, Felebration is an annual festival of music and arts commemorating the life and times of the late Fela Anikulapo Kuti, popularly known as Fela. It is also a month-long musical and lifestyle festival in honor of the legacies of Fela, the Afrobeat legendary musician, 
The 2022 celebration with the theme Fear Not for Man kicked off with activities led by artwork competition, Afrobics dance competition, and the fashion show competition. Over the years, Celebration has provided a platform to stardom for young creatives. And joining us in the studio to talk more on the essence of the festival is Fela's first child dancer, businesswoman, and media personality, Yeni Anikulapu Kuti. Power. Good morning. Yemi, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Yeah? You're supposed to greet me like they greet me on your view. Uh, YK in the building. YK, YK power. In yo, 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 yo. <laughs> uh, YK power. <laughs> Obviously, so what Mr. Are you? Sam doesn't watch us. No, he, he doesn't, doesn't even know He anything. doesn't know I that I don't know one. that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, boy, what are you thinking about Fela? Because instead you just came in, I just was thinking about Fela. So, yeah. Fela, you don't come again. <laughs> I never come again. I, I see, see them far away. <laughs> Where you they go? Where you they go? Don't ask me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what are you thinking of Fela this morning? What am I thinking? Yes. Well, you know, this, this month, this October month, Fela was born in October, and I decided to celebrate his birth and not his death. Because in Nigeria, we like to celebrate death. For me, death was a sad part of him, of our meeting. Yes. So I prefer to celebrate his birth and what he stood for. Yeah. So what I'm thinking about is, yeah, the stress of celebration. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so not felab per se, but the stress that I... Oh. Gosh. Yeah, mm. it has not been easy, you know. It hasn't been easy. Handling all of this over the years. Yeah, um, you know, we were calculating it yesterday. We have done this festival for 20 years. Wow. Yeah, celebrating. We took a break um, for two or three years, because Fela has been dead 25 years. So let's see, four years mm. we took a break, but intermittently. Uh, but... Um, First started in 98, we took a break in 99, in 2000, we opened the shrine to commemorate Fela, then another celebration in 2001, took a break, three and four, started again in 2005, and it hasn't ended. Mm. You know, we have just continued till date, and I thank... Your creator. Yeah. So how has it been, you know, the kind of support that you have been getting with regards to this young people? We know that you had the fashion show recently, the kind of uh, support you I wish you had come. Next. Mike came. Mike was there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was nice, you know, because they were... They were I didn't know that uh, Mike was a great uh, fella fan. I didn't know. <laughs> Until he came for the fashion show. <laughs> He was exposed. Uh, like he's you, dancing you... on the outside. Nobody can see him. He's dancing outside the... <laughs> right, right. You are talking to us about the fashion yeah, show. Yeah, the fashion show. They, they, were, they, they were to do four outfits. Um, fella of yesterday. Fella, how they would see Fella of yesterday. Fella of today. And the future. The future and Fella if you were a woman. Mm. I had a conversation with... Uh, um, this SAN, uh, Professor Ishesagi on Fela, was very close to Fela before he went abroad, before Ishesagi mm. went abroad. At that time, Fela was not uh, of Fela and Nicola Pukuti. That we, many of us don't really, can really understand. Yes. Well, Fela was a very charismatic person. You know, and you know, when he spoke, I don't know, did you? Any, I, I know Veronica didn't meet him. No. I met him, I met him a number of times, I, I, mm -hmm. and he, even in his house. Mm. Because one day we were, I can't say some of things you cannot say. You know, I met him <laughs> in his house, he was busy in the room, and he came and said, Ah, it was not be now, still busy inside. You know, that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, he was, he started, I mean, there was, there was, uh, there was uh, an instance where. Where we started talking, I think it was a, com a, com a, was a commemoration of his uh, mother. My mother died. And he gathered the few of us. I think I was there, Femi Ojudu, Dele Momodu, uh, uh, Bayo Nonuga, um, uh, I think Gohi Alegbe. We were there with him. I thought he had something to say. He said, No, this is not the time for Gbegbegbeo. 
Yeah, my, my mother, my political mother, and I said, with they put the pie, with the mark, with the, with the marker. There was nothing, he didn't want anything to say. He had much to say. But you could see that he had this strong connection with his mother that, uh, you know, mm. that was uh, was so powerful. And then when, anytime you had conversation, conversation with him, it turned it into some kind of drama. Even when there was nothing, it made it into something. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Well, like I was saying, Fela was a very charismatic person. You know, he, he, he you would be drawn to him mm. when he's talking. You would be drawn to him. You would listen to him. And he always had um, intelligent things to say and things that resonated with you as a human being, mm. as a black person. Be, being Fela's daughter, well, it's not just because I was Fela's daughter, but because he made me proud to be African. He made me proud to be black. He made me, you know, so like when I go abroad, for instance, I will always portray Africa. I will wear my African clothes, you know. Mm. I, it's because I want to show and um, be, show you that who I am. I'm proud of who I am, I'm, yeah. you know. So, and that was being his daughter, be, being so close to him, you know, being one of the people that... He, he, intimate, he intimate with yes. Now, that's what I want to know. You know, people always know the public persona mm. of Fela, the you know the braggadocio, the the tough talking, defiant man. Mm. How was he to you as a father? You know, mm. where's well, that tender part? Fela never showed any tender part. Everything was uh, was uh, was was a roar. <laughs> Everything was uh, was uh, was an attack, and uh, and how was he? How was he at the moment? Did, did you, any, I, any, when he, when you sat to eat, when he was giving you advice, what kind of advice would Fela give you? Let me just say this: <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't think Fela should have been a biological father. Mm. I think yeah, Fela mm. was more of a. Everybody was. The last child. So you, you, because you were his child, you didn't get any special, special, special treatment. treatment. There was nothing like that. So Fela was father to everybody. Mm. So did I, you seek him? Did you seek that? Did you miss that? Did you bring that to his attention? Um, you, you don't miss what you don't have. No, did you try to... Okay, did I'll you give see, you, I'll, I'll did give you, you an example. see it in other people that you I'll, say... I'll oh, give why? you an example. So we ah, daddy, eh, if you call me daddy, no pocket money for you. Ah, they won't tell you your head will reset. Yeah. Quickly. Because you want your pocket money. So... Um, so very early on in life, I, I I didn't call him. I've never called my father daddy. daddy. It's always been fella, mm. you know. Uh, so um, that's why I I think even though he was nice and he was lovely to us, I don't think he should have been a biological father. Mm. I think he should have been just everybody's father the way he was. Did you so, get the, the kind of? Uh kind of paternity from his own brothers. People like, uh, especially Beck, who was very close to him. No. Value to this, that you cannot buy with money. There was, uh, there was a conversation, uh, if you watch the film of um, the Williams sisters, there was a conversation like that between uh, the father and some of these uh, hawks who wanted to, um, to cut a deal uh, with uh, Venus. And they, they threw some money down and uh, he rejected it. They, they looked like big money. They said, no, 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 we're not going to accept this. Mm. You can't sell my daughter short. And then there was one scene with some white men who were eating with him, and he actually farted before he left. Those were emphasis. They said, nonsense. Yeah, you know, you know that, is, that is the kind of, when you know that this is your worth, and there is a meaning to art other than just money. There is a meaning that you cannot really count or, or count in terms of cash. Absolutely. That, uh, that, that Fela knew, is, knew that life was about value. Mm. And that's one of, one of the things many people need to learn from Fela's life. Uh, mm. How are you able to mm. cascade that value to the next generation? Because we see Madikuti also doing this path. Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of Madi. I have to say that because Madi is one young man who has just... I can't understand. He, he just imbibed this character. He's so honest. He's so... And I'm not saying it because he's my nephew. Because sometimes I just look at him and think, wow, my day, you're just not who I, I would have expected to, you to be. He's so... 
he's he's without guy. He's just it's just him, you know. So I know that I, um, he his generation at least he will pass on, and I'm just very proud to be who I am and that I was born into this family because the legacy yeah. that ha has been is, is continuing. Yes, it's been sustained. It's, Yes, it's been sustained. Thank you. That's the right word to use. And I, I, I just hope, you know, that future generations continue because we, we, we have a limited time on earth. Mm. The younger ones will take over. Even when, if we retire, we'll still be watching from the... You, you haven't really retired, you know. We still see the moves in, in you sometimes. <laughs> how, was it, how was it like dancing for your father? I didn't dance for my father. Really? Only my brother. Your brother, okay. Yeah. I couldn't dance for my father. Eh? Politics with all his wives. Mm. Uh, just leave yes, them. yes. Tell us about his wives. Right. <laughs> yeah. You like gossip? <laughs> <laughs> tell us what nobody has heard about Fela <laughs> yeah. and his wives. That, that I one, have not that heard. One, that one is the no, whole I've show. I've heard a lot. <laughs> that one is the whole show. Mm. Yeah. I'll take the whole show to tell you about Fela and his wives. Just give us a little sneak ah. peek. <laughs> ah, there was always competition. Who was going into the room? Who were his favorites? You know, did he uh, have a favorite? Uh, he had there were like three or four that went in every three days, yeah. You know, because Fela had real sleep at three days, and then Ben's there's sleep. actually there's a, actually a short story called uh, At Three Days mm -hmm. where everybody, uh, the wives of uh, Saint Ben Usman, a short story mm -hmm. wrote in, where a woman, where the wives will, 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 will take turns, and everybody will have their own three days with. Mm -hmm. uh, with, mm. the with the man, with the man. So Fela had her own three days. No, no, no. It was every. Days. No, it was not. They would not stay with him for three, three days. Three days, though. okay. Uh, let's say Veronica was one. Sorry, husband. Do. <laughs> <laughs> let's say Veronica was a favorite now, okay. and then you are another favorite. No, then, I'm a man. No. Uh, let's say you are a woman. For instance. <laughs> no, just for clarity. Yeah. yeah. All right. or, or maybe you are not even a favorite. You are yeah. every one, every week. So Veronica will go with him into the room. Today, and then she will go. Today is Thursday, so she will go again on Saturday, oh. and then again on yeah. Tuesday or Monday. Yeah. You know, so uh, then the other ones, the other one was every week. Maybe that one was every Saturday. It will be every Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you know, Saturday, that Saturday is your day, mm -hmm. and it's not for the whole day. It's like three or four hours. Another one will come in. You know. So uh, how is it that that didn't affect the relationship amongst the children? Because we see there's some level of bonding amongst mm. the children. It, it wasn't our business, no. Mm. Are we the ones sleeping with him? No, it's not the, necessarily, the because the, we see that some persons who have perhaps three wives, the children are not friends, or they don't even have that bond among, amidst mm. themselves. Well, I, I guess we, <laughs> we, we grew past that. Mm. You know, remember that I am much older than... The, um, I'm 62, almost 61, to next year. Um, Femi is the next, Femi is 60. And then my late sister, Sola, she would have, if she was alive, she would have been 59. So we were the first three. Then comes Kunle. The age gap between Kunle and I is 10 years. Mm. He's 51, you know. Then there is uh, Shalewa, she's in her 50, uh, late 40s, she's not 50 yet, she's late 40s. After Shalewa is Shin and Mutu. Mutu is 30, she's in her early 30s. All right. And no, 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 no. no Shin is going to be 40. Mm. So that Shin and Mutu are going to be 40 next year. So there's a wide gap. There's 21 years, 20 years, 21 years between Shin and I. So we are more like the mother and father figure, you know. So that where, where, how will you clash? Mm. You know, where can, you, can you, can you, did you ever experience Fela in the moment of inspiration? Moment like of inspiration. inspiration? Yes, when Fela was inspired, he would just sit down and be staring into space like that. I have and a story he, like that. You will come and meet him, you will talk to him, he will not hear you. Because I, 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 will, I will say this story. When we were younger, my grandmother, my father's mother, took us to Adekuta. Mm. And we stayed there for a while, and we really hated it there. So I got ill, and she had to bring me back to Lagos. And when I go back to the house, 
my mother wasn't in, my grandmother wasn't in, my maternal grandmother wasn't in. It was only Fela. So I went to him. And, I was, and Fela was composing, obviously, because only his mouth would move. His eyes would just be staring. Mm. So I went and said, Fela, he didn't hear me. Fela, he didn't hear me. Fela, he didn't hear me. Ah! I said, hey, my grandmother will soon come and take me back to He was in the spirit. Mm. He was, ah. Yeah. In the trance. He was in a trance. And he didn't smoke or drink in those days, so it was just a natural yeah. trance, you know. And I, I just started thinking, where am I going to hide if granny comes for me? I went to his room. I looked for my grandma. I said, ah. then I was thinking, because we'd been away for so long. Has my mother gone back to England? Where are they? I was, I was really like, and then I just came again and I said, Fella, get me. Hug me, you know. Oh, your mommy and nanny have gone shopping. Ah, we're going to come to Adekuta to pick you up. You know, but for those few minutes, he, he didn't know away. I was there. I heard this, I heard the, the, when they sang the Shakara, that the story where he was making a move on, uh, on a young girl. And the girl was, was trying to touch her. He said, not touch me, not touch me. <laughs> so, so, Fela was still was just staring into space mm. for a long time. And everybody was, what was going on with Fela was just there. Then suddenly he said, Shakara Olo Jenny. That's how I said that. <laughs> that's how I said that. Said. So that's how I said, that's how she made it. I said, Shakara, nah, Shakara. You know that? <laughs> so I think that's how And he got, he got another one too, he got from uh, Chudi, mm. when he was saying that, uh, Everything, a uh, second tier, everything don't tear to pieces. You go, you go, you go for there, five combo. You go for there, three, three combo. You go for there. Say na 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 second tier, everything. Because the guy said that uh, he said they hiding money in different parts of his house. You do the one. That money, hiding money in different parts of his house because of uh, yeah. second, second tier. Second tier was actually a policy. An economic policy during uh, the uh, Babangida regime yeah. where people were supposed yeah, to, I remember, to start. Uh, no, I'm talking about Adbias who don't know what second okay. tier. You know <laughs> yeah, so uh, Fela, Fela was, he, he did that. Even uh, Palava, yeah, you know, yeah. landlord. Palava, was it, was, uh, you did uh, the landlord, Palava, you go get uh, you. Tenant loss in job. Yeah, tenant loss in job. <laughs> 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 ah, I think we have to make that a celebration thing one day. Yeah. Mm. Trouble sleep. Trouble sleep. Yes, ah, young girl go wake up. up. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, maybe that will be our thing for next year. You have given yeah. me inspiration. An inspiration. inspiration. Yes, 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 yes. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's imagine Fela was alive at this time. What do you think his reaction would be to the situation in the country? Because those kind of featured in some of the songs he sang. Um, I really think that um, Fela was very disillusioned when he died because things were happening in the country that he had been singing about and nobody was really listening. Mm. You know, nobody was re really listening, um, voting for people they shouldn't vote for. He, he had told you that this person is like this and you will still go and vote for him. So at that time, he was not, he was a very disillusioned person, I believe, you know. Uh, uh, I think if he had been alive, he would be in despair because the way the politics and the political system has gone, it's not the way he's, he would have seen it at all. It's not the way he would have seen it. And um, he would probably have been very, very um, depressed. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, he would probably be singing. If you remember one song he sang, Look and Laugh, mm -hmm. you know? That, that showed his despair at that yeah. time. And that was even long before yes. um, the political dispensation. Right. Uh, so, but at the fashion show, I really missed him because when those young kids were coming out with their fashion, I was like blown away. And I was like, where is Fela? Why can't he see what, what they thought? The future of, the, of Fela was just amazing. Thank you for staying with us. We've been discussing celebration and we have uh, YK Power still with us in the studio. Just give us details of uh, celebration, the lineup of activities, who we should even expect for all of these activities. Well, I can't tell you who you should expect because I'm not in charge of the artists li right. uh, list. But a lot of the artists support us and they come for celebration. So we've already had... Um, 
we've had the dance competition. Really, um, there was the first prize was one million, and the dancers were I don't I hate to use that word amazing. <laughs> They were amazing, honestly. They were. They practiced and they danced to the theme "Fear Not for Man." Um, then we've we've had the art competition. Mm. That was also ah, gosh, the artists. You know, we have talent in this country, Absolutely. real talent. And yesterday was the school's debate. I missed that because I had to go and see the governor. And you know, when governor says, "Come and see me," if you don't go at that time, you won't get another appointment. Opportunity, yeah. So I we rushed there. We were there. And the governor has been very supportive. He, um, he has promised to come on the last day, you know, which is <laughs> going to be really nice, you know, mm. to see him at the celebration. I wonder how he's going to of integrate course, trust, with the crowd. Trust, yeah. The Lagos State Governor, yeah. <laughs> of course, trust him to do that. But, uh, you know, what concerns me about uh, Fela is the fact that he was, uh, his music was was also a statement. Mm. It was not like uh, Shakespeare, it was in his 12th night, he said, if music be the food of love, play up, give me a sense of it, that's something, the appetite may sicken and so die. That's when again, that they dying for, oh, it came over my ear like a sweet sound that breathes upon the bank of valley, okay. go on and on and on. Uh, but it's all not, if music be the food of war, <laughs> play on. I've come to bury the government, not to, not to save it. Yeah, eh? yeah. It's, do we have that? Do, 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 do we miss that kind of social conscience in Nigeria? You music need to today? answer that in a few seconds because we have to wrap <laughs> this up now. Quickly. Okay. Um, the, I, well, I don't know about the music of today, whether they, but I think they will develop, or I mm. hope that they will develop into, because things can be happening to you every day and then you will not. Talk about it or think yeah, about it. Yeah, well, they're still bugaying and they're still. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's what the generation uh, understands. No, that, that's what you see. I think it's just their own escapism. Mm. Mm. It's just their way of. I don't want to think about the, my suffering. All Let right. me just enjoy. It's denial. Right. Right. Mm. They don't right. want to face and confront their problems. We can mm -hmm. we can continue this conversation, but <laughs> time is not on our side. We must thank you, YK Power, Yeni Anikula Kukuti, for your time. Thank you, thank you for having me. So let me show, let me say to YK <laughs> Power. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're watching TVC Breakfast. I hope you had a great time with uh, the celebration discussion there with uh, Power, uh, powerful uh, YK. Now, but let's head into something else that uh, also impact and affect Nigerians, and this time around of great concern. Flooding is a perennial problem in Nigeria. We all know that. It is the most common natural disaster in the country with serious wide-reaching impact. The majority of Nigerian states are increasingly suffering excuse me, from annual flooding during the rainy seasons that have been linked to climate change. But unlike some disasters, human-induced flooding can be controlled with proper planning and the provision of necessary environmental infrastructure. While the rain may be a blessing to farmers, for some others, it has become dreadful due to the destructive impact it has, it has on lives and property. Let's talk about that in the next uh, couple of minutes. Joining us in the studio is Ido Salau, environmentalist and MD CEO at uh, Backpressed West Africa Limited. It's nice to have you join us here. Thank you, uh, Ido. Now, the point there is, we have talked about this. In fact, just recently, we were talking about the floods and all of that. Now, Kogi and part of Benue has been on the news in the, in the last couple of days, and the flooding has taken things to another level altogether. Would you say all of this is man-made? Because there's the issue of the man-made, and then there is the nature-made or natural uh, disaster or flooding. But talk to us about this. Yes, it's uh, more of nat natural before. Hmm. The, what we are now having now is human-induced factor. Human-induced factor is now making it to be uh, for us to have a, a, a lot of risk. Hmm. We are now going through a lot of risk. And if you look at it, in fact, the new uh, research being done on flooding now is that we, are we going to attain the SDG goal, 2030 SDG goal? Are we going to attain it? Because the flooding is affecting some of these indices. Farmland are now being affected. By the time the water... Uh, set you down. Now we're going to have a kind of health implication. People are going to be affected because their water, source of water is going to be polluted. Again, some 
may not be able to go to school. Infrastructure is being destroyed. They may not be able to take farm produce to the market. So now, what, what are we going to be talking about now? It has happened, it has happened. We need to now talk about uh, a mitigation method. We need to talk about how to reset to people that are in the area. We need to get them relief package. Then we start planning again so that next year on, we will not have this kind of devastating effect. And that's the advice I'll give to policymaker. And the advice I'll give to popula uh, the populace, that is the people in the river line area, or people that are along the bank of the river, mm. they should think of relocating. They should, they, they should not be thinking that this is my ancestral home, this is my farmland, this is my family. They should just think of their life first. But, but uh, that's, not that, that's not that easy. You know that. Yeah, yeah I agree. You are, you, are, you are used to living in a particular place for a long time, and then things come and things change. Uh, nature changes everything. And then you want to get to a new environment. How do you get a home? How do you how do you feed? How do you send your children to school? How do you? Do? It's a new, it's a radical, radical turn to life, and this cannot be done just by individuals. I agree with you, sir. But he said, when there is life, there is hope. Mm. That's why we have government. Mm. That's why governments all over the state uh, in Nigeria they start creating relief package. They start resettlement mm. area. Mm. We have some in Igado, some in Ikorodu uh, area, and that's where. You see, when someone has life, you can still be thinking of how I can reset to myself, how I can mm. plan my life again. Mm. But if mm. you have been swept away by the, by the, mm. SS, uh, mm. the flood, what mm. can you do again? Mm. So it's still one of the things that is under the preventive measure, measure under uh, flood risk management plan. You must talk of prevention, you must talk of mitigation, and you must talk of uh, how to do uh, Under mitigation, you have to talk of relief mm. and resettlement then people now plan for their, for, 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 for their life. Do you get a sense that this uh, climate change thing has, uh, has not dawned on us as it should be in this country? The impact of uh, floods, the impact of uh, rains, the impact of uh, dislocations to lives, and so on. Uh, it looks like we are, not, we are not ahead of the curve. We're not even on the curve of, of it yet in this country. You are correct, sir. So what do we do? You see, environmental infrastructure facilities should be one of the paramount things we need to do. Climate change is real. We are not, Nigeria is not immune from flooding. We, we are, others uh, climb to are experiencing it. How do they cope with it? What do they do to reduce the impact of flooding? Do we have infrastructure that will reduce the impact of this flooding mm. in place? We talk of the natural drainages channel. Mm. Mm. We talk of people building on, on a, a flood plain area. Mm. Who give them approval? We talk of people throwing rubbish on the, on, on the uh, uh, waste on, uh, unnecessarily on the, uh, on the canal, on the uh, 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 waterways, and we talk of Inadequate waste management system mm. in the, by, by the policymaker and government. All this culminated into what you are referring to, why we are not even in the curve yet. There are two ways to handle this thing. We will look at the story of Bar Beach, for instance. Yes. Um, historically, when the thing started, we had the situation where um, the Benoit. federal government mm -hmm. was sinking $4 billion. Yes. Every year. Yes. Just to try to keep it as bad as, as it, it was. Yes. Then there was another model, which was taken over by Lagos State Government, uh, begun by uh, Ashura Jubala at Tinubu, yes. in which he said, we can reclaim that place yes. and turn it from disaster into opportunity yes. and into even to prosperity. Yes. How are we? Doing, how can we do that in other areas? There are so many places in the country. Look at places like Jigawa, for instance, where they have flood every year. People die, and then they wait for the waiting to dry, 
and then everybody thanks God that it's over, only to wait to die again and thank God again yeah. the next year that it is over. Why don't you get a solution? Why don't you turn it into prosperity? People are doing that. I've been uh, to places abroad. Uh, was it in uh, Germany? Was this city in Germany? I can't remember where I went to. Even where in the Netherlands. They were all living on the edge on of the, the water, river, yeah. river like that, and everything has been taken care of. Let me give you a historical That's background. Hamburg. Hamburg. No, yeah, okay, let me give you a historical background of that barbecue you're talking about. Mm. I was part of it. Okay. In 2001, 2002, as you yes, he started it. We did a report about Babbage. Mm. And Ecological Fund Office gave the contract. For, that was when Yomiru, uh, Chief Yomiru was the Minister for Special Duty, mm. representing Lagos State in the mm. cabinet. Mm. And as well, you approached him, and they started the Babbage 1 reclamation. Mm -hmm. Babbage 2 reclamation, about $6 billion. And as well, you look at it and said, it's like we are just Burying water, water yeah, money, and running in the water. water yeah. And he's, he went to South Africa with some of his cabinet. I remember very well. And they came up with that idea of what can we transform Babbage into? It's a marvel development, mm. thinking idea, a mm. very good idea. Mm. But what is happening in Atlantic City? Yes. Properly planned. Yes. But do you know the side effect of Atlantic City? Mm. Some other areas are now being eroded. Yes. There is no more uh, Alpha Beach. There is no more uh, Kuramu Beach. Other area too. Yes, I mean, you have to adapt. Yes. Have to adapt but the if that too. system was not taken that mm. time, mm. maybe the whole no, of no Victoria Island will have. There will be no Victoria Island. Exactly. Yes. So that is what we talk about: renewable mm. energy of city development. Mm. It's been done all over the world. You transform a brown area to a green area. That's what Shakespeare said. He said, nature must bow to necessity. Exactly. And that now, we are, we are, uh, Lagos State is gaining two things. They have saved the coastline of Babbage, transformed it to economic gain, and we reduce the impact of maybe spending money wrongly in preventing coastal erosion, because that was what we are experiencing in Babbage then, mm. coastal erosion. And that coastal erosion will bring about coastal flooding. So, and that's why you see the entire Amadou Bello Way, that time, is always flooded. But do we still see flooding on Amadou Bello Way anymore? No. no. So, the same thing, city regeneration. Governor Ambode did, the, Ambode did the same thing in Okobaba. One particular section of Okobaba is being transformed into uh, jetty. Yes, yes. They've reclaimed that area. So if you can do that, uh, that stretch across of, the coastline, uh, across, across the waterline, uh, 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 water river bank, all the way to Baesa and uh, that is what, and, uh, these are know, the opportunity rivers. that is now coming up. Rivers, yeah, from, but, but are they are they long term implication to the reclamation of lands like that? Yes, because, because you were saying that well, they've done a good job with that, but then there are other beaches that uh, that are being flooded. Talk to us about that implication and how we how we can balance it. Because uh, we're looking for development, yet if that development is going to cost us something uh, in the future, how should we approach well, it? Well, we need to do adequate planning. Mm. And we need to let the people who know about the uh, effect of uh, river flooding, coastal flooding, and urban flooding. Mm. By the time we invest on infrastructure development, environmental infrastructure development, there is opportunity that, it could, that could be created from that. That Atlantic City option is one option. Another one, if you develop the coastline very well, there will be, uh, 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 there will be improvement in tourism. Instead of leaving it for coastal erosion, you develop all the coastline, people will come for tourism, they will, they will, they will be visiting the beach, you, you improve the economic uh, activities of the of the, community, of the community around the beach area. And there is economic uh, uh, the, uh, gain for people in the area. So that's one area. Another area is that you protect the environment itself. The flora and the fauna, you protect them. Uh, all, the, uh, all the coastal line, that, uh, the, some, some area you have where they plant coconut, they plant, uh, the, they come start harvesting the coconut through the coastline. 
And again, if you plant coconut along the beach, then you reduce coastal erosion too. Mm. So these are things you need to look into. Even though we're having disaster, we can turn that disaster into opportunity. The excess, let's leave Lagos. Let's now go to Interland. The excess water that is in Jigawa that you mentioned in this, if we have water preserve, uh, reserve, reservoir, yes. and we take the excess water away and, and store, store it, it, that's what they do in South Africa. We use it for power? They, 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 it for, not even that. They use it for, for mining. For mining. mining. Yeah, they but, but use it even for uh, irrigation. Uh, irrigation. During the, for uh, during that, that, would mean, that would mean more dams. No, no, for the dam. Don't forget that the the position of where Nigeria is. Mm. We have two rivers yeah. that came into exactly. Nigeria. We are in the basin region. Basin, yeah. Yes. So the one, one is coming through Cameroon, one is coming through Niger. Mm. The river Niger and the river Benue. Tajalo. So we need, now they are, relieving, they, they are releasing water, for, excess water from the dams, the Lago dams and the other dams in uh, Upper Volta. They are releasing them and they are coming, Nigeria is the recipient state. So the, 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 the Nigeria, uh, the basin the that is receiving everything. Now, it passed through Nigeria, through Nigerian city, into, into the Atlantic the Ocean. Atlantic. So the, river, the people on the riverside area are the ones that are going to feel the effect because that is where they have their livelihood, daily livelihood. They are, they are, they are farming system, they are, they, are, they are even living standard, everything, their houses, household. Look at the data we are having now from the from the present flooding, this year flooding, 8,000 uh, people have been affected. 300 people died already. We have 300 deaths already. We have the one in uh, Anambra, about uh, 49,000 households, mm. 650,000 uh, people displaced, one death. A lot of gullies caused by all and of so, this. And so I pity the governor of uh, Anambra state now. Is, is the environmental challenge, what is facing in terms of environmental challenges. And even Kogi State. And, Kogi, and even yeah. Kogi State. Because now, uh, uh, flood is here now. He has a lot of gully erosion. He has to think of other things. So the, how will the people who are doing farming be able to send their produce to the market? What, what would it look like in look, creating a scenario where if, for instance, Kogi State that houses where the, the two rivers mm -hmm. uh, That's why we had the confluence. The confluence yes. Exactly. If Kogi State alone cannot handle it, and you know that, okay, Benue is just by the side that also has or feels the impact. Mm -hmm. Anambra State is also just by the, by the bottom. It also yes. feels the impact. Down to Delta, yeah. and then down to Bias as the case may be. Quara, Niger. Quara, exactly. Niger. What, what would it take for these states along that to come together, pull resources together, and work to see what they can do regarding uh, the, the annual uh, uh, challenge that they always have? Okay. We, there is no arm of government that is not going to be responsible hmm. for bringing in a kind of uh, mitigation method to solve this problem. We might not be able to solve it 100%, but we can at least reduce the impact. We have the Ecological Project Office. We have NewMap. NewMap is being, uh, uh, being created at state level. And state governments will make it a priority that no matter the kind of development you are handing for, trying to do for your people, all these developmental projects are taking place in the environment. Why are you? Putting a lip uh, listening into environmental projects. Why a lip service? Why are you doing that? You have to be, make it in your forefront, a bouncing burner. You let it know that if I don't get this, just flooding alone can swipe away whatever uh, uh, infrastructure that you put together. So that's why the synergy between state, federal, and, uh, federal government, state, and local government should be together and they should be able to come up with a kind of holistic approach to put in place infrastructural facility, environmental infrastructure facility that will reduce the impact of flooding on the population. That is one. They should check human settlement. They should make sure that the citizens adhere to the building code and they should take drastic action where they're supposed to take it. And what do I mean by that? If you see any houses near the floodplain area, demolish it. Let the, let the government take, take the bull by the horn. 
Because when the disaster now happens, it's the same government they will be blaming that they, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't do anything. So we don't, we don't have to be waiting every year to do resettlement, to give relief. But don't forget, infrastructure, environmental infrastructure development project is expensive. So that is where they now have to look for the fund, mm. and maybe a special fund mm. to tackle it. I think that we, we are downplaying the value of environment yes. in, in, in development. You are correct. We, we, we need to get a, a more robust environmental vision for this country, something like a maritime policy, a maritime vision that, that, that we encompass everything. It encompasses farming, food, uh, power, uh, education housing. and all housing mm. and all of that. We need to get an all-encompassing vision, and I think it needs, the government needs to come up with that in collaboration with states, because that is the wave of the future. The world, the, the environment, is the main topic in the world right now. That's it. Even water, the, talking, the, the water is becoming a source of power in the future. Who are saying that after some time, some governments will start making plans to manufacture water because they are saying that the, the topography of water in the, the world favors certain parts of yes. the world and others. Yes. And that place like United States may not will not benefit from this new environment and they they're not thinking about how to make water, how to manufacture water for for, for the future because become become the source of power That's in right. the world. When you talk of the the, the top most powerful country in the world may be the one who has water. That's it. <laughs> you know, that's it. Just no, as no, we're talking about, correct. just as we are talking about uh, AI, artificial yeah. intelligence. intelligence. Yeah. Now, yeah. You know, all of it is also going to be used also to try to make water and make the environment, you know, worth living in. Sir, there are some country like UK. Mm. There were, I think, there were the changes in the government policy, mm. and one uh, the the one particular agency. That Andrew, that is responsible for environment. Before I take this office, there must be a 25 years environment plan mm. that we have to follow. I have not seen any government in Nigeria, apart from Vision 2010 environment plan that was done during the Abacha period. And that was the only blueprint that I've seen. And we, it's there in the Ministry of Environment, dust in there with dust and everything. Nobody pay attention to that. Now, that is 2010 has passed. Do we do any other environmental plan? And in this same studio, the last time I appeared, I asked them, any gov anybody campaigning now to come up, to come and tell us, the environmental plan or the green agenda that he has for Nigeria. Because without that green agenda, you will not be able to give us any development, uh, 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 developmental program that will suit the trend that is going on in the, in the world now. Because everywhere now in the world, they talk of renewable energy, they talk of uh, uh, green economy, and all these are what we are looking at that will salvage and that will let us be on the same platform with the entire world. Mm. So that's the only thing advice I would give. All right. So I wonder how helpless Nigeria is at this time. You just said that, of course, environmental issues, the infrastructure is quite expensive. It's expensive. Really expensive. Yes. We're looking for monies for, you know, basic uh, infrastructure and basic things. Power we have not solved yet. Road infrastructure, housing, we're still struggling with all of those. As much as we're making little progress here and there, and then we talk about the environment, which is huge. And yeah. we're talking about this environment it doesn't have to do with one state, one region, one. It is the entire country because okay. the nature of environment or the challenges in the south or even in Bayelsa or River State or Kwaibom is different from the one you find in Sokoto or uh, uh, Zamfara uh, State. Or Lagos. It's, it's diff exactly. It's different from Lagos and it's different from Benue and all of that. So we're talking about it everywhere. How helpless is Nigeria in that situation? For that statement you made, let me just give you how flooding pattern changes mm -hmm. from one state to the other. All right. Lagos is on the lowland area. Lagos is prone to the three flooding system. Coastal flooding, river flooding, urban flooding mm. in Lagos alone. And if Lagos want to start spending money to improve the infra environmental infrastructure development of the six natural gorges that he has, Odoyalaro, 
the system one, system two, system three, system four, all those ones. I remember Governor Fashola during his time spent a lot of money to execute nothing less than 720 something kilometer of drainage clearing and construction of new one, running into billions of naira. But the, the next government, did they sustain it? That is one thing. And I remember again, federal government spent close to two point, no, 1.2 billion naira to dredge just two kilometers of, of a river channel, Asa River, in Iloni. Now they are doing phase two of this now, which is about 1.6 billion, under six years. And maintenance dredging is supposed to continue, mm. but Iloni Asa River is still overflowing its river bank. And that river stretches up to 15 or 18 kilometers. So, it's a long way. It's a long, so that is the kind of investment we are looking about. All right. Uh, it's good to create a mind picture so we know the, the weight of what we're looking at. Uh, I wish we had more time to talk about this, but I know that uh, in the coming days we'll still keep talking, uh, especially finding a way forward. Thank you so much, Dosalao, for coming on the program. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Right.